More on the King's Birthday Honours. Because I see an old sparring partner of mine, Irv Hull Goldberg, Emeritus Professor at Queensland University, has been given the highest award, Companion of the Order of Australia for Service to Climate Science. Or should I say he got it for warning for almost 30 years that the Great Barrier Reef is going, going if not gone already because of global warming. Only to find again and again the reef keeps bouncing back, as he admitted yet again in this online lecture three years ago. You know, in Australia, the Southern Great Barrier Reef is sort of unusually healthy at the moment. Now, I've followed uh, Hugh Goldberg for decades, really, even before 1999, I'd say, when he predicted coral reefs could be eliminated from most areas of the world by 2100. The next year, he reckoned the Great Barrier Reef would be destroyed before then because corals couldn't fully recover from bleaching episodes like the major event in 1998. The overall damage, he said, was irreparable. Except it wasn't, as I kept pointing out to his annoyance. But on he went in 2006, saying most Great Barrier Reefs he'd seen were 100% bleached, and he was still at it six years ago. Climate change hasn't gone away, and it really is a major threat to places like the Great Barrier Reef and Australia in general. We lost 50% of the reef's shallow water corals in the last four years. Except, as the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority conceded just two months ago, the reef actually started the summer of 2023-24 with high coral cover. And while there have been some setbacks since to the reef, like a cyclone, among other things, it cautioned that reef, the reef goes through cycles of disturbance and recovery, just like any natural system. Joining me is a scientist who, alas, did not get an award today. In fact, he lost his job as head of physics at James Cook University because he kept warning correctly that his colleagues' predictions of the death of the Great Barrier Reef were grossly exaggerated. I'm talking, of course, of marine physicist Peter Ridd, who's now chair of the Australian Environment Foundation. Peter Ridd, great to see you. A Top Australia Day Award for Ove Hul Gulberg. Is it deserved? You've got to give it to old Ove. He's been incredibly successful <laughs> in what he's trying to do over a long time. And look, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be ungracious. I'll give him my congratulations. Uh, you know, in actual fact, Ove is is not the worst of these climate catastrophes. He's actually come out quite recently and saying that, you know, we've got to go for nuclear power. Uh, you know. You know, he gets a lot of blowback from that because everybody on his side is anti-nuclear and the rest of it. So I'm going to give him it. But, of course, look, these these awards, they're for the establishment, for the insiders, and the insiders own the present. But the outsiders and the rebels, you know, people like you and me perhaps, well, we own the future. Because what you're actually seeing is a growing uh, distrust for a lot of this science. A, uh, a favourite statistic of mine is that uh, polls in the America show, show that 60% of Americans uh, reckon that climate change has become, quote, a religion that's being used to control us. So, you know, the times are a-changing. Yeah, look, I've got to say that uh, personally I found him quite nice. I had a lovely debate with him on the ABC and he did... Give him credit, apologise for falsely claiming he was being paid by Gina Reinhardt. Um, he did admit that maybe he's spoken a moment of anger, I think. What is the state of the Great Barrier Reef? Our record amounts of coral. The last three years, we've never had more coral. This is statistics from the Australian Institute of Marine Science. And most remarkable, the type of coral that is now in just remarkable amounts is the type of coral that Ove and everybody else agrees is the most susceptible to hot water. So how can you have all these supposedly massively destructive coral bleaching hot water events and end up with record amounts of coral, especially the types of coral that are most susceptible? So it proves that completely conclusively that it's been exaggerated. And remember, it's not just for 30 years that Ove's been doing it. You go back to the early 1960s, when this started, not on climate change, but the death of the Great Barrier Reef has been predicted by these so-called scientists since marine biology got going on the reef in the early 1960s. Oh, look, I just don't get it. I mean, admittedly, uh, apparently, it's been the Great Barrier Reef Authority is saying 
you know, it's been battered a little bit by the uh, recent cyclone, a crown of thorns, some runoff from whatever. But at least to its credit, it's now saying reefs do bounce back. It's not irreparable, the damage. Uh, that's probably why the reef's been there for many, many thousands and thousands of years. So what does it say about the state of the science that Herr Gulberg, for all this charm, uh, gets this award and sceptics like you lose their jobs? Look, what it says is that science has become dominated by the, the groupthink, by the insiders, essentially. Uh, and that's a real problem, where you can get something that is quite clearly demonstrably wrong, at least on the Great Barrier Reef. You can argue about, you know, what's going to happen with the climate in 100 years, but what has actually happened in the last 30 years on the Great Barrier Reef is demonstrably wrong, and it means we really need this science auditing, which I've been pushing for for the last basically 10 years. Uh, as you have, Peter Reid, it's always great to talk to you and it remains a tremendous injustice what was done to you and may you one day, with a change of government, get the order that, of Australia that you deserve for courage in the face of, uh, of a mob. Thank you so much for your time.